Hey there, so I hope you're doing well. Um, following on from the last video where I was looking at some um, basic dovetail saws, um, because it's been a couple of weeks now perhaps, I've been reflecting on the Spear and Jackson a little more, the um, 5410Y, as it's so charmingly called. And yeah, I've been thinking a bit more that maybe it might serve as a bit of a general purpose bench saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cross cut the timber and see how effective it is and then do my dovetail so I can just give a bit of better feedback. So we'll, we'll cross cut the timber ready for the joinery. And it's really the limit of what we want to use a back saw for of this size. This is a six inch piece of timber. And see, it's so short, I can't really get much of a stroke through the wood. But it's holding smoothly. When saws are new, they can be a little bit grabby. Um, but this one's fine, I'm just letting the saw do the work. It's got quite a bit of weight to it. And I don't think the um, the other saw I was taking a look at will cope quite as well with this. So the other pinch, I think you could probably use this. So I popped a knife line around that. And all you need to cut things to length is a knife line. You don't have to be chiseling in little gullies and all the rest of it. It's just not necessary. It's a, it's largely a waste of time, which is something I'll come on into in a future video. You can see there, nice and clean. So yeah, no problem. That's going to be fine for joinery. I'll clean these up, ends up with a plane, and then we'll get on to forming some joints. Now, as I've mentioned before with, um, you know, planing things. You don't need to have a super fine grit to do it. This plane is sharpened with a Norton India sewn and a little bit of a strop. And um, we're dealing with pine and grain. It's obviously nice to have a shooting board, but if you're cleaning up something that's three quarters of an inch thick, you're getting into that area where it's a little bit hard going on a shooting board. It can be done, it's fine, but if you cut it pretty square, you can tidy it up in the vise just fine. The key thing is not to just push all the way through. As soon as it's looking clean, just flip it around. Come from the other side. Crack that a little bit. You can see it's got a nice clean look on the end grain and we're kind of ready to go onto the joinery. It's now time to cut some joinery. Um, my guess is, again, a new saw, it might be a little bit grabby, but we're keeping it nice and low in the vise. fine it feels a touch coarse but I say it's a new saw it's not unusual now when you form the first part of your joint you don't have to cut perfectly to these lines you want to be straight across but if these wander just slightly it's not the end of the world and although it might be a bit aggressive, if you just lift so the toe is just engaging slightly and just very lightly cut, 
So you've got a curve all the way across. And then you can add a little bit more power. Like I said, worry more about cutting straight across than um, being dead on your, your angle lines because they don't matter so much at this point. Okay, last one. Yeah, so it feels very eager in that pine just to really go crazy and pull itself pull itself in. It's quite a quick cutter. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just um, cut the waste out in the centre with a coping saw. Again, it leaves quite a big curve, so um, it's quite easy to get your saw in. Now, looking forward to doing a video soon about the differences between using a coping saw to remove the bulk of your waste or a chisel and, you know, does it make a better joint and that kind of concept. Because there is amusing ideas out there that if you chop or use a coping saw, one's better than the other. And just to give you a teaser, it's just, it's all about the baseline and how you treat that. Um, so now we'll trim the, the tops. Again, me reviewing this um, these budget saws is in no way a slight on the quality tools which can be purchased for higher prices at all. Um, what it is is just being prepared to show people there's an option out there if the budget's a little bit more limited. Um, I've got a couple of things I really enjoy woodworking and quite into motorcycles as well. And everybody can quite easily become a bit of a spec sheet nerd and worry too much about having the latest and greatest kit instead of concentrating on technique. So yeah, if anything, the saw feels a little bit coarse, but in thicker material like three quarter, that's not much of a problem. So I'm going to go ahead now and just do a bit of tidying up of the joint, um, tidying up the waist, and I'm going to be using some of those real cheap chisels from, from Amazon. This time what's important is we want to be accurate as we go across and as we drop down and we need to make sure that the saw is in the waist. So the waist is here, so we don't want to be on this side, we want to be in the waist side, otherwise we've got problems. So again just a light touch on the toe. just quickly waste that out with the coping saw. As I've said, it um, doesn't matter what you remove the waste with. It's the baseline that matters.
And we can see if we made a royal pig's ear of it by just offering up this one before I clean everything out. I can see that's going to seat up nicely once I've cleaned the joint out. So I'm just going to clean these base lines up again using the um, cheapo Amazon chisel and um, see where we end up. So I'll bring the joint together now. And I promise, you know, it's not like flashing crazy in here. You see, look, there's the, there's the teeth marks of the saw, teeth marks of the saw. Likewise here, you can see all the teeth marks. I've not been in there with a chisel paring it off because I believe, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it sometimes, but more often than not, you want to be practicing to try and get things to fit off the saw or off the tools wherever possible, just because it's a massive time saver. I'll give you a bit of elevation. So in my opinion, that's pretty respectable. Just take a moment to flatten that off. I think that's entirely reasonable. You can see I've got a little bit of a fine gap there. There's a bit of a spring, so I think the wood's a touch bowed. Um, it's all pretty neat. And yeah, I could quite happily use that saw without any any problem. So again, it's just a quick, quick little review there. But I think further to it, um, I think I could do quite a bit of small beginner work with that saw. I would say it's a bit coarse for dovetailing. You know, that three quarter inch stuff is what a lot of beginners will use. And in my opinion, it works fine in three quarter inch pine. Um, something a bit finer if you're going down to half inch and less, I think that's going to be a bit too aggressive, but we can maybe in the future look at improving that. Um, I think you can cross cut with it. Um, I didn't get particularly well set up with my bench hook there, but if you can get a little bit more angle on it, I think you can cut through timber. So yeah, if you're in a real budget, just fine and those really scabby chisels you know I cleaned up the corners in here as you can see a lot of people say it's like with these fat edges you'll never clear those corners out properly well you know I've got a gap there everyone can see that but I haven't bruised um, corners off as I've gone in there and dealt with anything I only really went in there anyway but you get my drift it's you've always got a gap where the saw's gone in anyway so you don't need micro micro fine edges on it and if you tilt the chisel just fractionally as it goes down it's got a nice slicing action to it and it keeps it nice and nice and tidy so yeah i think that's a decent enough saw not a rolls royce not a lee nielsen but a fraction of the price and before you add in your squares and everything, if you want to get someone on a budget, I think that's okay. I think it's completely reasonable.